All right, so this is the second video of the modeling section for the multi-part modeling for the Onshape Associate Practice Exam. In the first video, we built this uh, part right here. And so now we have three questions, seven, eight, and nine that are asking us to modify this part. If you did not watch that first video, the link should be in the description. You can go back and watch that one first. And so we have question seven here. It says continue with that document. We're going to activate tab seven. So we're going to come down here for tab seven for our instructions. And then it says in an assembly tab. So before we were in that part studio, now we want to be in the assembly tab. We want to assemble the instances um, for the parts shown. And we're going to insert and mate a standard content socket into the assembly. So we are going to go to this assembly tab. And then we will hit insert. And we're going to insert part studio one. And we can place this wherever. And then we'll hit the check mark. And then we also want to insert this uh, standard part. If we go to the assembly, uh, this is our exploded view. So it's basically showing these pieces which have already been assembled for us. And then we have uh, this fifth part, which is the socket button head. So we're going to come back over here. And I'm going to insert. And instead of inserting one of these guys, we're going to go to standard content. And this might be all over the place. You know, you might have some a bunch of random stuff. So you want to just make sure on standard, anytime you see M, that's usually going to be um, ISO. But if we actually go back to the instructions, it tells us exactly what we want. So standard is ISO, then category is bolts and screws. We have socket head screws, right? Then we have the socket button head screw, 70, ISO 7380. And then it asks us to do M6, 10, 10, and stainless steel. Okay, once we have that, we can click insert. And when we click on insert, We'll just place it you know, kind of wherever we want. I'll click over here and we'll hit the check mark. Now we want this part to be going into the bottom. You don't need to rotate it. It can kind of rotate as you go. If you really do want to rotate it, you can click here and you can rotate it upside down and you know type in 180 or go right there. And then now it'll be flipped upside down. Um, but that's not really totally necessary. It can help out a little bit. And so now we want to insert that down in there. Um, I decided to go with a cylindrical mate and I did the center of that cylinder with the center of this cylinder right there. And then I hit the check mark. And now if I hit escape, this can still go kind of up and down. Um, and we may want to actually as well before we do anything else, hit undo a couple times. We may want to go in here and fix the base. And actually, I'm going to fix all of these files because right now we have them right where we want them. You can go in and you can add all of the, the necessary mates to them, but we don't really need to since we made them exactly as they were intended. So these are, are together with each other. This is the piece that we want to make sure we're, we're working on. So I did that cylindrical mate, and then now I can drag this up and down. And then we want to make sure we go in and we add the planar mate. So I want this plane right here to be flush with this plane over here. And we'll hit the check mark. Um, it is allowing us to spin. That's okay for right now. We don't really need to worry about that. You could fix that um, later if you wanted to. These little warnings are just telling me that more than one part is fixed, which is normally not something that we want to do. But for this file, since all they're asking us to do is find the overall mass, that's okay. So we can go ahead and highlight all of these guys and click on display mass properties. We get 227.502 which is our answer right here, 227.50. All right, next up we have question eight. And question eight says, uh, continue with that, make the edit shown. So we're gonna increase the diameter of the base, increase the length of the post, increase the length of the top pin and change the fillet radius. So those are our tasks. If we go to question eight and we scroll down, they basically give us all of these uh, 
changes that are made here as well as on here. So the first uh, change was the diameter of the base. And if we go to the base part, it is now 110. So I'm going to go back to over here. Um, I'm going to click on my base. When I click on my base, the reason I like to do this is I can see what uh, what I used. So I used hole four and the very top one was extrude three and sketch seven. That's where I did my base. So I'm going to double click on sketch seven, hit normal. We had this at 90 and we want to make this into 110. So now that's done. The second task was to increase the length of the post that is part of the mic holder. So I'm going to go back up here to the mic holder and the length of the post is now 15. So again, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on the mic holder. And that way I can see extrude one, extrude two, right? That's all of what I had. So um, the sketch was actually just this part. And then extrude one, that was where I got this height from. So it was 10. Now it's going to be 15. Just a little bit taller. Okay, next up, we want to increase the length of the top pin and then change the fillet radius of the top pin. So if we go over to the top pin, it is now a length of 30 and the fillet radius is one. So I'm gonna click on the top pin. That was from revolve one, which happened out of sketch six. So we will double click on sketch six. And we now have 30 for our height. And then this radius of two is now a radius of one. We will finish that sketch. And then everything should automatically update. We're gonna go back to our assembly. And if it doesn't, there might be a yellow, you know, kind of update all references to our latest versions here. But if this is grayed out, then we know everything has been automatically updated. We can highlight it all and make sure it's all highlighted over here as well. And then we will hit the display mass properties. We want 313.35, right? 313.35. And then finally, question nine is actually very, very quick. It just asks us to change the material of all the parts as shown. So we will activate tab nine and the post and the mic holder are both ABS. So we'll come back over here and our post, we're gonna right click it, edit material, it is ABS. Mic holder, same thing. And our top pin is aluminum as well as our base. Those are both aluminum, so we will Edit the material aluminum, the basic aluminum, and then our base, edit material, we've got aluminum as well. Then the socket button head is stainless steel. That's what it already was, so we're good there. We'll go back to our assembly. We want to make sure we get the uh, mass properties here because over here is where our socket button is included. So we'll highlight everything again. Display mass property is 118.099. That's going to round up to 118.10, which is our final choice. All right, so hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and good luck.